vintage two-stroke junkies and welcome to episode 18 of a bike and a beer the show where every saturday i feature a badass vintage motorcycle with an appropriately paired beer if this is your first episode i'm so happy that the youtube overlords brought you to me feel free to subscribe if you like what i'm doing and if you're part of that rad crew that watches these every week you know you're my favorite all right folks this one is another one for you oil mixing fanatics this is a 1967 Montessa Scorpion. I think it's the first two-stroke dual sport to really hit the market, but we'll talk about that in a second. Before we do that, what beer are we gonna drink with this bike? Well, since this is made in Spain, I elected to choose a Spanish beer. I have, before your very eyes, an Estrella Dam, which is named after a gentleman named August Dam, who in 1876 escaped the Franco-Prussian War, set up a little brewery in Barcelona and got started living his dream. Let's open it up, see what it tastes like. Okay, August, let's see what you got. Tell you what, that's damn good. And uh, it's a lager, by the way, and it's quite beautiful. It won some stuff. <sighs> Feels like a winter lager. I like it. All right, 67 Montessa Scorpion 250. These were actually introduced in 1966. And guys, I think that means this is the first two-stroke dual sport, you know, kind of adventure bike of the day. I'm up for contention on that. I'm all ears, but let's talk about it. We got... The Husqvarna Commando 250, but that came out in 67, I believe. We got the Yamaha DT1, that came out in 68. We got the Al Botaco Alpina, but I'm sure, pretty sure that came out in 70 or 71. And the other Japanese makes with the Kawasaki Bighorn and whatever the Suzuki was called, I think those came out in 1970 also. Honda, the MTL Sonora, I think that was early 70s, 73 or 74. So, I don't know. If it's not the first, it's like really really in that first group so um if you think you know of an earlier one please feel free to leave it in the comments i would love to hear it but uh i think this is the first one now this is actually the third video i've done on montessa so i've had some discussions in the past about the history of the company but they're fairly old they got started in 1945 and by the 60s they had a big factory and they were doing really well their main focus was producing competitive scramblers and also very well handling road bikes this bike's kind of a combination of both of those. And if you're wondering where it sits in the lineup, in 66 and 67, this bike would have been offered alongside the LaCrosse, which was the same motor, both 250s, but the LaCrosse was the full-on scrambler model, kind of like the Diablo that we looked at two weeks ago, which came right before the LaCrosse. So this bike was offered as really their first dual sport and it had some options that made it really uh, adjustable for what you wanted to use it for if you were going to use it for more road orientation or if you really wanted to take it off road and have some fun we're going to go over all that but that's the kind of the progression of the models all right let's dive into all the juicy details on this bike let's start with this awesome motor 250 cc two stroke aluminum barrel now these were a little bit detuned compared to the lacrosse the lacrosse was putting out a wicked 30 horsepower by 66 and they had these set up to put out 21 horsepower so a little bit less but really really strong motor they put a ton of research and development into these they put over a thousand hours on the dyno to develop this 250 motor they had full circle cranks aircraft precision main bearings, high strength strutted pistons, full floating needle bearings on the upper rod, and high performance porting. Incredibly robust frame that I talked a little bit on the Diablo video. They put struts basically anywhere they could. Breaking a frame for Montessa just wasn't an option. Look at this incredible integrated skid plate here made to completely protect the motor from any rocks or other debris heavily drilled plates here to keep the weight down and keep the air flowing over that motor as well. And if we look at the rear section of the frame here, look how they masterfully made the frame go around the rear of the expansion chamber. This protects it, keeps it nice and tucked in. Just a very unique move on Montessa's part right there. This expansion chamber here is something you'll only see on a Montessa Scorpion. And boy is it distinct. Here's that uniquely Montessa cover here on the frame 
does a great job at keeping mud and debris away from the carburetor. It also has an integrated toolbox here. There is supposed to be a door here. My buddy Alan, who this bike belongs to, is working on getting that repaired and installed. Um, the carburetors on these. So you'll notice it's a monoblock style with that side access to the float bowl. Now these are Amal 389s, but you'll see on the cover it says Fabricado in España. And the reason that is, is because during the time when this bike is made, the Franco government required that all the parts be made in Spain. So Amal actually licensed Montesa to make the carburetors. And you can see they're almost the same, but there's a few subtle differences between the British-made Amel and the Spanish-made Amel. They're very subtle. Close, but not the same. My buddy Alan does have the original air filter set up for this bike, but these K&Ns just work so much better for a bike that's actually going to be ridden. Montessa did a great job giving every inch of travel they could out of these Telesco front forks. The rear shocks would have also originally been Telesco's as well, but this bike's been fitted with S&W's, which is also period correct. Now, the lacrosse or the scrambler version of this bike would have gotten a fiberglass tank, but these got steel tanks for road use. And you can see this bike is fitted with a full lighting system. What I love about this old Survivor is that everything works. Headlight, tail light, high beam, low beam, the horn, and the kill switch. The speedometer works as well, which is just a real triumph for a bike this old. These are the correct stocked handlebars, and Montessa called them the Wide Westerns. They were pretty similar to what you'd see on a California desert sled at the time. And this seat is almost a foot wide, and it's four inches thick, so plenty of comfort there. You can also put your wife or your girlfriend on the back, and she'd have a good time too. You can see almost any plate that can be drilled is drilled on this bike. I think it was, at the time, kind of a more modern look and also kept the weight down. You'll also notice that this bike has a twin leading shoe front brake. Seven inch brake front and rear, but the front's twin leading and it actually works really well. I'm kind of a fan of single leading shoe front brakes on the front to be honest, but this one actually feels good. Guess what kind of rims are on these? You guessed it, Akron aluminum shouldered rims. 19 front, 18 rear. This bike has Shinko trail tires on it. They work well and they're pretty darn affordable too. Alloy fender in the front, steel painted fender in the rear. Helical cut gears in the primary on this bad boy. Now I mentioned that when you bought this bike you had some options to make it the best bike for you. And one of the ways you could do that was in the gearing. They offered a ton of options. You could get a front countershaft sprocket in anywhere from a 12 tooth to a 16 tooth. And on the rear, you could get anywhere from a 40 tooth to a 60 tooth rear sprocket. So you could gear it to the moon if you wanted to go fast, or you could gear it for some low end grunt if you want to hit the nasty trails with your buddies. You could also choose what kind of tires you wanted on the bike. So you could maybe choose something a little bit more road worthy if you were taking this bike to work every day, or you could throw on the knobbiest of knobbies if you wanted to do some rock throwing fun out on the trails. Well, if you didn't hear enough of it in the intro video, I figured I'd fire it up for you. This process is old hat by now. Petcock on. Give it a nice big tickle. Kickstarter out. Put my beer down. All right, let's give it a whack. gets me fired up like the sound of a two-stroke. Man, that's cool. Whew. Smoky too. All right, folks, with all that said, that's going to wrap it up for episode 18 of A Bike and a Beer. You know what I say next. I'll be back next week with a whole new bike and a whole new beer. Looking forward to seeing you then. Cheers, everybody.